welcome to episode eight. For some reason today, I thought it was episode nine. I'm getting way ahead of myself. So welcome to the Everyday Living Recipes with Love podcast. If you're a new listener, um, I will explain to you what this podcast is about. It is about recipes. So if you need some new recipes for your meal list or your home or holidays, this is the podcast to listen to and talk and join the conversation. So happy that you decided to come join us for the episode eight. And today I'm just kind of finishing up the family and friends section of this cookbook. So I'm just going to finish up on this episode and the next episode of the recipes that not are hers. She probably just found them somewhere. Uh, Just going to do the rest of them that she put her name on in here that she probably just found somewhere in her family or in a book or somewhere she read it. So they're not actually hers probably. They might be. Um, So I'm just going to be finishing up those things on this episode and episode nine. And then I'm going to be doing three more episodes um, on this season, which is season one of the podcast. And then I might do a season two. We'll see. Um, I'm thinking if I do a season two, I will probably be going to the next section of the cookbook, which is appetizers, dips, and snacks. So that'll be a really fun section to read if I do a season two. Let me know what you think about a season two. If you're enjoying this podcast and you would like to see more, please let me know. Um, I hope that you've caught my podcast on YouTube. I think I've got that working now. And also, I am going to be launching it on Spotify here in a few days. So I'm still learning but I would like to have it up on Spotify at least. That's the only music slash podcast service that I know how to run. <laughs> I mean, I might try to expand to the Apple side of things. I don't know what it's called. The service that you can use for Apple um, to listen to your music and podcasts. But I am personally a Spotify person. And so... I know that everybody else might have their own opinions on what I should be on, but that's the first thing I'm going to work on. And then I might just kind of do some research on what else I can put it on. Um, I have no idea even how to do it on Spotify, so I'm learning every day. But I really hope that you've been enjoying this podcast. And I will quit talking and get into the recipes we're going to do today. So today we're going to go over three different types of recipes. And then the next episode, which is episode nine, we're going to be going over three again, I think, is what I counted. And then um, I don't know what I'm going to do for episode 10. I might just move on to the next section. So um, the first recipe is called meat sauce for pasta. So it's like a recipe for a meat sauce and you add your noodles and your meat Um, I'm sure you can add any kind of meat that you prefer, but for this one, it's calling for two pounds of bulk Italian sausage, and it says, or ground beef. Um, I'm not a big fan of sausages. Um, Sometimes I like, like, regular sausage fried up, or, like, in biscuits and gravy and stuff, but I'm not a really huge fan of, like, Italian sausage or, like, a hot sausage. Um, I'd rather prefer hamburger probably, but like a regular sausage, like original would kind of be good in this recipe. So you're going to need two pounds of that. Then you're going to need one large onion, two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce, two 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes, undrained. So don't drain them. Half a cup of fresh parsley minced. Two teaspoons of garlic salt, one teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon each of dried basil, chili powder, and pepper, two bay leaves, and then it says pasta cooked. So you just like pick the pasta you want to put in there if it's for spaghetti or um, whatever pasta you're making. Um, my One of my favorite pastas other than spaghetti, is probably 
that garden rotoni, or however you say it, I can't say it as an Italian, but that garden rotoni is pretty good. And I like the um, shells too. And then I like the panini noodle, if that's the way you say it, panine. <laughs> so those are my favorite noodles to use in, in things. So, so here's the instructions to get started on the recipe. In a Dutch oven, <laughs> you have to have a Dutch oven. Did everybody know that for this recipe? <laughs> Cook meat and onion over medium heat until meat is no longer pink. And then you drain it. You add the tomato sauce, the tomatoes, mushrooms, parsley, and seasoning. Mushrooms, huh? Did I skip? Yeah, I don't think mushrooms is in the uh, ingredient list, but I guess you add it. <laughs> so if you like mushrooms, add some mushrooms. It doesn't say like how many or anything, but probably just to your desire, I guess. Um, and then you add the parsley and seasoning. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat. Cover and simmer 45 minutes. Stirring occasionally. Uncover. Simmer 15 minutes longer or until sauce reaches desired consistency discard discard bay leaves freeze in meal size portions to use frozen meat sauce thaw in refrigerator overnight place in saucepan heat through serve over pasta it says yield about 14 to 3 fourths cup servings so that's kind of a neat recipe it's kind of made for you to freeze so you can use it for any time, like a meal that you don't have something prepared for a sauce. It's in the freezer and you can thaw it out. That's kind of neat. Um, it does sound super yummy. Um, I would not put the diced tomatoes in if it was me. But everything else, I probably would. Except the onion. But it sounds like a really good sauce. I probably did have this before. But I really don't remember it, you know. It was probably just... I do remember her cooking a lot, so I probably have had it in, like, a spaghetti or something. But it sounds super good. Um, so you can, like, freeze it and, like, use it for any time. So that's super awesome, too. I love recipes that you can do that with because it saves a lot of time. So I'm going to repeat that one one more time, and then we're going to move on to the next recipe. So two pounds of bulk Italian sausage or ground beef. One large onion. Two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce, two 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes undrained, half cup of fresh parsley minced, parsley, sorry, two teaspoons of garlic salt, one teaspoon of dried oregano, half teaspoon each of dried basil, chili powder, and pepper two bay leaves, and then the pasta that you want to add to it. In a Dutch oven or any kind of oven, <laughs> cook meat and onion over medium heat until meat is no longer pink. You drain, add tomato sauce, tomatoes, mushrooms, parsley, and seasoning. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat, cover, and simmer 45 minutes, stirring occasionally. Uncover Simmer 15 minutes longer or until sauce reaches desired consistency. Discard bay leaves. Freeze in mill sized portions to use frozen meat sauce. Thaw in refrigerator overnight. Place in saucepan. Heat through and serve over pasta. And it says it makes 14 3 4 cup servings. So, I mean, you know, you'd be splitting that up if you wanted to freeze some. So, that is that recipe. And it sounds so good. I always loved pasta and spaghetti and all that and all the other Italian foods. Um, Isn't pizza Italian too? I think so. And I love all that. <laughs> so, now the next recipe is a potato soup. Now, I already know that I've done like a soup recipe. And I've given you my recipe for a potato soup or my version for the crock pot. Um, but <laughs> this one just kind of was in here that had her name on it. And I just thought, well, I'll share this one too. 
because the inspiration for this podcast was her. So um, I know that I've already shared the hash brown version. I think that was my version on episode, what was that, two? Maybe it was episode two. I think it was, or episode three. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. (laughs) But I'm just going to share this one anyway because she put it in here. And I'm sure I've had it before. I'm sure my mom, this is the way probably she made her potato soup. Because I remember her making a really good potato soup. And she probably used this recipe. I'm 100% sure of it. Um, There is some things that she had to take out. Because once again, we are picky eaters. But I think this is the one she used. And so I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, it's not hash brown version. It's like a version of actual potatoes. That you have to cube. So um, I always hated cutting potatoes or like a vegetable like tomatoes. I don't use tomatoes, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, But, you know, peel them and then you have to chop them. But that's the, the kind of potato soup recipe I'm going to share with you guys today. And it's going to be over the um, stove. So the ingredient list, you're going to need 8 to 10 potatoes cubed, 1 medium onion chopped, 5 to 6 stems of celery chopped, 6 to 7 chicken boilon, water to cover. So that must be mean like the boilon cubes or however you say it. Those little cubes that you can get in like chicken or beef or I think there's like a vegetable one too or something. And it gives it flavor, like in the crock pot when you're making a soup or like you just put it in there and it stirs it up and it melts in there and it gives it flavor. I don't know how to pronounce it. Somebody show me how to pronounce it. I don't know. I I can't pronounce words very well sometimes. So those cubes. So you're going to add one and one half cans of evaporated milk, salt and pepper to taste, add three to four tablespoons of oleo. If you want a thicker soup, add potato flakes to thicken to your taste. So that's all the instructions say. So basically, you just put it all in a pot with your flavoring cubes and put the water in it. You put water in it to cover all of it up. It doesn't say a measurement. So you just put water in it until it covers all the stuff up and you boil it until... Um, you can add the evaporated milk if you would like. I would. And then if you want like a thicker soup, you're supposed to add oleo. So that's the simple potato soup recipe. Now, I don't remember my mom using stems of celery in her soup or an onion. It was just a potato soup. So she might have taken all that out because she knew we were picky. I bet you. <laughs> so... That's the recipe. I'll go through it one more time because it might be a little confusing listening to me read it and not seeing it for yourself. So I will read through it one more time kind of slower because I know sometimes I get jumbled in my words because I'm going too fast. So this is the potato soup recipe. You need 8 to 10 potatoes cubed, 1 medium onion chopped, 5 to 6 stems of celery chopped, 6 to 7 chicken oil on cubes. I'm not saying that right. I already know. And water to cover. Add one and one half cans of evaporated milk, salt and pepper to taste. Add three to four tablespoons of oleo if you want a thicker soup. Add potato flakes to thicken to your taste. So that's how you can thicken the soup. So that is the potato soup one. Let's move on to the last recipe for this episode. So the last recipe for today is called apricot salad. And this is another one she put her name on in here. She probably found it or wanted to share with everybody. I'm sure it's not originally hers. I don't want people to get confused because I'm not sure if all these are hers. I'm sure some of them are, but I'm not really sure which ones are. Some of them she might have just found from other people. And I don't want to get that mixed up in this podcast. So... I always try to clear it up when I'm reading one with her name on it. So this is an apricot salad. You're going to start with one small box of apricot jello. Half three ounce package of coconut pudding. Not 
instant. Huh, I'm trying to think of what that is then. I've never seen like a coconut pudding. Hmm. And I don't want you to get the instant box. Someone clear that up for me because I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> um, I wish I could clear it up for you, but I do not know what that means. One and a half cup of water and one 16 ounce can of apricots. Now, who loves apricots? I don't really know if I've had apricots. Aren't they kind of like a little um, peach or something? I think they're similar to like a peach flavor. I don't know. Someone clear that up for me too. Um, so you're going to mix jello, pudding, and water in pan. Bring to a boil. Immediately add the can of apricots. Juice and all. Pour into a salad bowl. Ref refrigerate until set. It does sound really good, but I'm trying to think of what an apricot tastes like. I don't know. Is it like tangy or is it like sweeter? I don't know. Someone needs to clear that up for me in the comments on YouTube. <laughs> or um, just email me. I don't know. But something needs cleared up about that for me. And then clear up what they mean by a three ounce package of coconut pudding. I don't know what that is at the store. What do you get for that? That is so confusing. So. Anyway, a lot of people get confused most of the time, and here I am today confused. Somebody please, please help me through it. <laughs> um, so I will go through it one more time. This is a very short and simple recipe. Um, and then this is the last one, so we have to chit-chat for a little bit. <laughs> so one small box of apricot jello, a half three-ounce package of coconut pudding. Remember, it's not an instant pudding. You know, I don't even know if they have like a coconut in like the cups. I don't know. I am so confused on that. So I don't know what to tell you to do on that. And then one and a half cup of water. And then you're going to add one 16 ounce can of apricots. You're going to mix jello, pudding, and water in a pan. Bring to a boil. Immediately add the can of apricots. Juice and all. Pour into a salad bowl and refrigerate until set salad um topic there was like the salad that I think my grandma made or sometimes my mom would make now someone cleared this up for me maybe I'll find it in one of these books on one of the pages sometime and it'll kind of refresh my memory but what's the salad it's like a fruit salad too it's like a um the one with pretzels and like jello and like whipped cream on top was it like strawberry I don't know it was so good though I think it had like real fruit in it or something. I don't know. I'll have to like do some research on that because it was so good. Anyway. So I still don't know what an apricot tastes like. But I might try this if I can figure out what coconut pudding to get. So that was our episode for today. Um, so the next one will be three more recipes that she had her name put in here that she found and stuff or whatever uh, they came from. I'm not sure. But I wanted to share the rest of hers that were in here um, before I moved on to another page. So um, I think all of these today I would like to try. Um, they all sounded pretty good. Um, the meat sauce was very interesting for me. I really like that you can freeze it. You probably can freeze anything. Um, but I just like that it had in the instructions. It was so like easy to make and it was very handy to just unthaw when you needed it. So I really liked that part of the recipe. So that one was one of my favorites today um, when I was reading through it before I got on here to record my audio. I was reading through it and I thought this looks like such a really thought out recipe. Now if she didn't find it from our family, I wonder where she found it because wherever she was looking, she found the best ones, you know. But so um, there is an email address that I will continue to say at the end of my episodes. I already know that it's on YouTube now, but um, still, I, I like to give people options. Some people don't like getting on YouTube and, and, and the comment section there gets kind of mean sometimes because people never know how to be nice on there. And so for the people that don't want to do it that way, they can do it through the email and so I just like to 
have both options open for people that don't like it that way. So the email address for this podcast is everydaylivingrecipeswithlove at gmail.com. You can email in with anything you would like, really, and I will respond to everyone that I can and might even mention you on the podcast if you would like to be. I will never mention anybody that doesn't want to be mentioned. I would never do that. But um, for now, I think this is all. I will see you on episode nine. And I actually made it over a little 20 minutes, right? Almost on 21. And uh, these episodes are getting a little bit easier for me to get to that point without like struggling about what to say or like, you know, stuff like that. So I'm getting a lot better. So I want to thank everybody so much for all the support on this podcast. I really, really appreciate all the views, all the clicks, everything. I really, really, really appreciate it. I cannot thank everybody enough for all their support. And I just want to say I love you all. And I can't wait to bring you more episodes. So I will see you on episode nine. Thank you guys so much. Have a fabulous day.